What is up YouTube and all my fish keeping friends? How is everybody doing out there in fish tank land? I'm really excited to get Amber to share with us how to culture flightless fruit flies. Okay, so Amber has a lot more experience than I do at culturing flightless fruit flies and she's been doing it for a couple of weeks now, for about a month now here in the house. So I begged her to share with us how she does it. It's an awesome food for fish and for reptiles like Pedro. I keep mixing it up and I know everybody else does too. Flightless fruit flies. We've been uh, we've been culturing them for Pedro and he's up in there. Pedro the lucky lizard. These are pretty easy to make and I think the first thing you need to know about them is if you culture them at some point you're gonna call them fruitless flight flies. It's fine. Everyone does it. I do it probably every like fourth time. <laughs> so you need four things to culture them. Uh, the first being an already established culture which you can obtain at pet stores um, and online as well. Josh's Frogs offers a very good kit that contains everything you need to culture them for several months um, and you can find that on their site or Amazon. But So you need the culture which again you can pick up very easily. You need these which are 32 ounce deli containers and you have two options. You can get just the deli containers with the normal lid and put the holes in yourself. I used a paring knife and just kind of like stabbed it on the cutting board. Or you can get these, which are from Josh's Frogs. They have the little vent holes. And the main thing to keep in mind is the holes need to allow for air to come inside of the culture so the flies can breathe, but prevents things like flighted fruit flies from going in and laying their eggs because that could ruin your culture. Um, the other two components you need are some type of fruit fly culture medium. Uh, this is by Rapashi. As I said, Josh's Frogs makes one, and this isn't like sponsored by them or advertising for them. I just I think it's a really good company, and it's a very uh, approachable kit for someone who wants to start out. So you need some type of medium, which this is just like any other Rapashi. You add boiling water to it, and I'm going to show you guys how I do that, but. It's what the fruit flies live off of, it's what they get their uh, hydration from, and it's also what your fish or reptiles when they eat the flies are going to be eating, so you want to make sure it's a good high quality medium. And then you have this stuff, which this is commonly known as Excelsior, um, it's a wood wool. Now you know about steel wool probably, it's like a cleaning product. This is the same concept, only wood. It's a byproduct of the logging or forestry industry when they cut up logs. I guess this comes out and they sell it as a medium or a media for fruit flies. So yeah, those are the four things you need to make a culture and boiling water. All right, so I figured you guys didn't need a tutorial on how to boil water. So we have two thirds of a cup of boiling water or very hot water. You can also like put it in the microwave for a few minutes, but you want two thirds of a cup. And then as per the instructions, you want three to four tablespoons, which again, fun fact, four tablespoons is a quarter cup. So I just do kind of like a scant quarter cup and I dump it in. And you kind of have to go based on the consistency like any other rapashi, but being fish keepers, this is not something most of you are unfamiliar with. A little bit more, actually. So closer to the four tablespoons. And as you can see, it's already starting to get that like thickness that you want from rapashi that you just mixed. It's kind of like... Ooh, I could smell it. Yeah, it's mm, interesting for sure. Then just take a little rubber spatula because I don't like to waste it. And dump it into the container. And I try not to get it on the sides. Um, yeah, just like when you're doing like microworm cultures and stuff. Yeah, you do want it at the bottom. So. Oh, you there's... got a little bit on the side, Amber. <laughs> did. Ooh, almost got a little on your camera lens, you Joseph. You did. <laughs> All right. And then you're gonna take a good, whoo, making a mess, throwing things. Okay, it's exciting, guys. <laughs> so you're gonna take a handful of this, so like, it's gonna make a huge mess too. It's fine, it's fine. Like this. Amber likes to make messes. I'm very good at it, I'm very good at it. So you just take it and bundle it up and kind of push it down into this medium. I'm gonna take a little bit more. And you don't want it like a tight wad, but you also don't want it too loose. This is what they like walk in and lay their little 
eggs and larvae in. Okay, so it's the next day. We went ahead and let the culture media congeal. And I think it's really cool how it kind of, this wood wool, you know, is like glued in place and part. It's all one thing now. That's pretty cool. So explain to us how we're gonna do this. From this point forward, it's pretty easy. Uh, but before we do that, I wanna point out that we have the two different cultures. We have the one that today we're gonna be splitting and it, for the most part, doesn't really have a lot of larva. It's kind of just over at this point. But this one, which I didn't want to knock out, and in a few days I will, look at all the larva. Yeah, there's thousands and thousands. But then there. look through the lid. I don't know if that's a good view for your camera. You but can kind of see them. Yeah, there's thousands of them in there. And within the next few days, I can split this culture and get another 10 to 15 out of it if I wanted to. Really, which if you have a big fish room, I mean, free food's free food, right? Right. <laughs> so to do this, I take the lid off, and this is because we're gonna be feeding some fish, uh, the fruit flies, so I want another container, and I kind of squish it down a little. And then to get them out, because their inclination is to climb up to the lid. Mm-hmm. And then I tip it down, and I oh. watch. The other starting to, and at that That's point. That's it, huh? Just like 10, 15 of them? About 10. That's all you really need is 10 yeah. or 15 flies. Oh, maybe there's more like 15. Yeah, there's probably more than that, but still. Okay, let me zoom in. Yeah, you can see them in there. And you'll have a few dead ones that fall out because there are dead ones in there. Yeah, and little larvae shells and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Don't worry about it. But yeah, new culture. And then to feed, it's the exact same thing. You want a lid because they can climb, but. Okay, so to feed, you're gonna go ahead and just put a whole bunch in there, huh? We're gonna feed some of the cichlids? Yep. Cool. Oh, wow. Some Look at will them all. get out on the table, unfortunately. Right, they're moving fast. But... So, how long would you wait on this new culture over here before you probably pull from it? How long do you think it'll take? I would want, see, it's not, it depends on temperature. That's the thing. You can store these guys at really any normal room temperature that's comfortable for you. Uh, they do grow faster in warmer temps like anything else. As we mentioned in the beginning, you can get the cultures from a pet shop online, and there's gonna be two main types that you can find, Melanogaster and Heidei. These are Melanogaster, which are 1 16th of an inch. The Heidei are larger at 1 8th, so it really depends on what you're feeding which type you want, but the Melanogaster are the more commonly available. This culture, so to answer your question, you'll know this culture is ready to start feeding when you can see these, which are the larvae. You start seeing larvae collecting on the side, stuck to the Those side. Those little white shells up here, the white ones, yeah. are unhatched. These okay. black ones right. are all hatched out. And those and are the old. larva. So you want to see larva and a lot of adults before you start feeding. So you want to see all three stages of them before you start feeding them off. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and feed these flies that you've collected to some cichlids in the living room? Yeah. All right, I'm going to follow you. Okay. So I think first, which, yeah, which the cichlids? red jewels. Red jewels? Mm-hmm. And then a couple of the epistos and the angels. Okay. You just tap them down to the bottom, right? Yeah, because you really don't want them climbing out on you until you're ready. Right. Tap them to the bottom and then tap them to the front when you're ready. Oh. You're just going to go crazy after them. Yummy, yummy. So how often do you think, you know, in a weekly diet, how often do you think you'd feed these? Or would like to sit well? For, for fish that are like bug eaters, like the cichlids? Uh, as often as possible, really. Yeah. The so. more live, natural foods you can provide, the better. But we can move on to Mr. Agazizii next door, who looks very nice. Yeah, there you go. It took him a while to see it, but he found it. So I think Priscilla and Elvis would like a treat. I think they just want food in general. 
Angels are piggies. Oh, immediately. Yeah, they're not worried. They're whatever it is, they're ready for it. Where is it? We're ready. We're ready. Where is it? They're like, oh, it's not a sinking food. We have to look for it. They're actually spoiled. They're like, oh, we gotta work for this. Priscilla hasn't figured out there's food. Oh, there we go. But that is really good enrichment though. I mean, they have to kind of really look for their food a little bit more than the, the sinking, you know, frozen blood worms and stuff like that. So these are the uh, the black rams. Yes. I love that blue coloration on the gilt plate. Mm -hmm. You can still hear the angels. Yeah, you can hear the plans. angel fish. They're so loud on the tank above. <laughs> yeah, they're. Yeah, the rams are enjoying it. <laughs> I think we're interrupting the spawning with a snack. But let's do this. So I think that we might have interrupted uh, these guys spawning. The female is currently in the cave that they've been digging out and it's about time in their cycle. So the Nigerian red mm -hmm. for We put some up there but they don't seem to really even care about the bugs so much. I can see them moving up there a little bit. There's definitely some something going on Look in here the because cave. yeah. The male's out and she's gone. We've been waiting for this though for a little while. Yeah. That's when she's surprised, that's what you get. That's what you get, surprises. I still hear those angels. <laughs> yeah, the angelfish are still making a bunch of noise up there. Why don't we try, uh, yeah, who's next? Mama Agazizio down here. She's been doing a good job with her babies. These are our oldest group of Apisto babies that we have on the rack. Give all the mamas a treat. Yeah, or at least a couple of them. Yeah, there she's she gonna enjoy it. A little treat. Could feed these guys. I have enough left for treat for the McMaster I pair over here which this is actually our second McMaster I female uh, the first is with her fry over in the tank on the yeah. far end I don't know if Joseph in this tank over here that's yeah. the first female and, and then, then we also have Borrelii which are out and about yeah the Borrelii fry are over here on the left hand side with the mama mm -hmm. McMaster I mama number two Soon to be mama, hopefully. Soon to be mama. That's right, they don't have any, there's no, uh, she's been cleaning out the cave though, right? Yes, she has. I don't know if they'll notice them where I put them. Yeah, I can't really see because they're on the bottom rack. Mm. He finally found some, he's seeing a thing. He finally found some, oh no he didn't, Never mind. so forget it. He's so pretty. He is. So we have to go back to the Nigerian reds just for a minute because if you look at the male's gill plate, you'll see here when he turns to the side there's a blue ring and that only fires up when he's, that's his spawning garb really, you can see it there for a second. Well, I want to say thank you to Amber for sharing with us her little technique for culturing flightless fruit flies. And uh, I want to say thank you to all of you for all of your support. Thank you to all of you that like, comment, and share on all of my content. And remember, guys, keep your tanks clean, your fish fed, and have fun. <laughs>